Training day. Today is only day two of Tristan's carpet cleaning adventure. Our brand new guy. He's a natural on the wand. Cole and myself and him all team up and clean 1,650 square feet of commercial glue down carpet today at an empty space. Turns out really good with a couple areas that didn't turn out really good, but we had a good time. Tristan got some really good training on the wand and also the 175 floor machine, arguably the most versatile tool in the carpet and floor cleaning industry. Thank you guys so much for watching as always. Of course, don't forget to mash the thumbs up. Leave a comment below of any feedback or comments you have or your favorite part. And of course, if you haven't done so yet, please subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching. Beautiful Honda Odyssey wrapped up with A1 Carpet Care. And I followed Cole, Twinkle Toes Conley, and our brand new guy, Tristan, to the second commercial job of the day. The first one was so clean it wasn't film worthy, but this one, as you'll see, a little rough. Probably hasn't been cleaned in many years. It's a commercial glue down olefin carpet. Heavily, heavily soiled. As you can see, this area right here is probably the worst area, and we already got the vacuums out. Didn't get a whole lot of dry soil, and I was kind of on the fence on skipping the commercial vacuuming step, but with a new guy in training, I was reluctant to, you know, train him on the wrong way. And there he is, our brand new guy, Tristan. So he's on the pro team, Cole's on the workhorse. As you can see, it's about a 1,650 square foot space, as mentioned before. It took us just under two hours, and this was just under $500 job. The client today was not only a repeat client, but also initially a referral from our BNI chapter, which is ironically the same way we found Tristan, uh, our new guy we found through BNI referral as well. A lot when you vacuumed it. Yeah. Wow. It's crazy. Lyndon and Thomas had four jobs today. We just had these two commercial jobs. Like I said, the first one we went to. I was hoping we could shoot some video there as well, but the carpets were really not in bad shape at all, so we went ahead and just skipped over that. I couldn't help myself with this green room. It was like blue wall on one side and then green on the other, and it was like the blue and green. I just couldn't help myself. But regardless, we had the six jobs for today, so still staying really steady and busy, although we're doing quite a few commercial, empty commercial and empty residential cleanings versus what we normally do. So the vacuuming portion took a good while, but while that was going on, I was able to mix up the preconditioner, pull out all the equipment right outside of the door, run all our hoses, and basically have everything prepared for the as soon as we got done with the vacuuming portion, I immediately started to lay down a very, very strong preconditioner to try and break up some of these soils. This job required about eight gallons of soap free detergent or preconditioning treatment. And as you can see here, we are using our inline sprayer, which is a really nice tool because what it allows us to do is put concentrate inside of it and then it just mixes it by way of a four to one dilution straight from the truck mount. So it's really, really hot. And what you can see Cole doing now is setting up our 175 floor machine. You may have seen us use this tool in one of our previous videos for either wood floor cleaning or vinyl composition strip and wax. This tool is also obviously able to be used on carpet as you see here with a red pad. And we use this oftentimes in a commercial setting where we have commercial glue down carpet with no pad. 
as it's oftentimes for a closed loop fiber a better way to agitate than the counter rotating brush machine. All right, Chris, and this is a good spot for you to learn. So this tool is kind of weird. You gotta go up on this and then pull either one of these two. As soon as you do, it's gonna jerk you really hard. So the idea is to find an equilibrium, right? Where you're kind of not pulling up and not pushing down. Because what happens, once it starts spinning, if you go up, it goes to the right. If you go down, it goes to the left. So what I do is just up and down. You see the handle's got a little give in it. And just a little adjusting in that, and it'll start moving. You see how the pre spray is already digging in and taking all this stuff out of there? That's all we're doing, just grinding that in. So up and down, and back and forth. And it'll, it'll pull you, so be careful about that. Yep, that's like a safety. Yeah, you pull up on that and then pull the trigger. And then, yeah, just play with it to get a good feel for it. So you see where I stop? So you want to kind of maybe work your way into that area a little bit. Oh yeah, if you let go, it'll stop. So. The best way to move forward is... <laughs> yeah, it's tricky. <laughs> so what I'll do is I'll, I'll get it moving first, and then I zigzag it in. So as I'm moving this way, I'm going up, and I'm kind of pulling it up in there, you know what I mean? So that's how I do that. Back and forth, that's how you can move it back or forward, is it'll naturally want to go to the side, side to side, then you kind of work your way up to the back way to and then you can move it, see if you can get it up to that area there. No, it's, yeah, it's probably not going to be easy, but that'll be part of the training. <laughs> Do you see that spot up there that needs to get scrubbed really well? Perfect. Kind of figuring out how to manipulate it up, right? Still kind of tricky. Yeah, you're figuring it out. Good. It is hard to push it straight forward, but... You can do it. It's kind of tricky what he's doing right now because it's really grabbing that carpet. When Cole's used it, we've used it on wood floor, vinyl floor. This is probably one of the most versatile tools in the industry. You can literally use it to clean, I think, almost every single type of flooring. Um, but the most common application, in my experience, has been stripping wax. So you've heard of stripping and waxing the floors, right? Yeah. So that's vinyl composition tile, usually, that you're stripping and waxing. Yeah, you're doing good, though. You're struggling a lot more than you probably should be, and I know it's hard not to, but once you get the hang of it, let me show you. Once you get the hang of it, what you'll learn how to do, notice I can do it with one hand. You let the machine do the work for you. See how it's like a little struggle there is? So to move it forward, it's easier when you're going to the right. To move it backward, it's easier to go to the left. And the reason is just because of the way it spins. So if I'm going forward, I'll do it when, I'm, when it's moving to the right. If I want to move it backward, I'll wait till it's going to the left. Um, but yeah, see, it's just the way it turns. But that's definitely good enough for that. And then I'm just going to hit the rest of the spots real quick. At only 150 pounds, you can see that 175 floor machine was pulling Tristan around a little bit, but for his first time ever using it, he did a really, really good job. The other cool thing I like about this space was there's no way to accidentally pull that thing in, into a wall, which actually has happened a number of times in the past uh, with the brand new guys, maybe never used one of those. There's so much torque that a lot of times, yeah, if you don't know what you're doing, so with a huge open space like this, it was a really good area to train. Also, you can see here, Tristan and Cole did not have real good luck battling out this, this particular spot because this is just where we had some wheels from a chair that just completely obliterated the fiber. Uh, even though we were able to lighten it up a lot, we couldn't rejuvenate it back to initial um, you know, condition or whatever. But the client was happy, and that's really all that matters. So you can see Tristan got a really good amount of wand time today. This is not his first day in the field. We actually had him out uh, day before yesterday. We did a very large church, um, several thousand square feet of tile and carpet. We had three vans rolling 
for over three hours each. And Tristan, that was his first day. <laughs> so he got um, some good time on the wand. He was able to work with Cole. Cole's probably the most patient and calm and understanding and fun person on the team. And so it's good to kind of mislead our new technicians by way of allowing them to train with Cole because if they train with me, they usually end up quitting on the first day. We had a little bit of a mix up the other day on Tristan's first day, that very large church that we cleaned. When they called to book it, because we've cleaned that church so many times in the past, they went ahead and just said, we want all the carpet and all the tile done. And we wrote it down, no big deal. We showed up and I didn't even think about the fact that in addition to having a lot of natural stone, it's slate in particular, that had actually never been professionally cleaned before. They also have a large amount of vinyl composition tile, which we have cleaned, stripped and waxed a number of times. So I didn't even remember the vinyl composition tile. And of course we showed up and they expected and kind of hoped that we would be able to clean the vinyl composition tile as well as the slate. Now I came prepared to clean the slate or the natural stone, but I did not come prepared at all to clean the vinyl composition tile. And I told them that, you know, really to clean that the right way, we would need to strip and wax it, but they really just wanted it sanitized or disinfected, or at least have the application of a disinfectant put on there. So what we ended up doing was calling Angela and hoping that she would uh, be able to bring us some of the stuff that we needed. So they ended up having us disinfect or apply a disinfectant and clean four of the classrooms and then all the rest of the classrooms, I think there's five or six other ones, we're actually going to be going back to next week, Thursday and Friday of next week, and we're going to be doing some strip and wax on those. So I'll probably pick just one of the worst classrooms and do a cool little video to show us doing the strip and wax on that. And I'm not sure exactly if the schedule is going to permit, but I'd really like to bring Tristan along um, for that one just because I'd, he, I think it'd be cool to to show him that. Since we don't do a whole lot of vinyl composition strip and wax, it'd be neat to show him that. So you can see even I was able to get a little bit of wand time today um, just to show Tristan the right way to clean because Cole, you know, he doesn't have as good a form as I do, of course. But he did. This is Tristan, of course, on the wand again. Um, and you can see at six feet tall, he's got really good form. He's not hunched over the wand, which is the most common mistake that I see from a brand new technician. The second most common mistake I see is a brand new technician trying to do too long of wand strokes. And I think that's because I have a tendency to do too long of wand strokes. So they'll watch me do it and then think that that's a, an appropriate way to do it. That was also not Tristan's problem at all. He did a great job keeping a very mediocre stroke or not a huge crazy long stroke like me and Cole.
So we always get the new guy to drink one eight-ounce glass of... <laughs> no. That's gross. <laughs> yeah.